Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome to another draft profile here on the channel. I am Jeffrey Kirby. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at Alabama left tackle Evan Neal. Now, with Evan Neal, there are some things that we're going to need to discuss in terms of him because he is a possible, another possible first overall pick. So there's definitely things that you're going to like about him. There are going to be some things that we're going to have to discuss and maybe things that he's going to have to work on. And we're going to get into all those in this video. We're also going to look at some of the film. We're going to break it down, see what we like and see what we don't like. And it will give an overall perspective. It will also give you guys a NFL Pro com. If you like these kind of videos, again, smash that like button, hit the red subscribe button, drop a comment, turn on the notification bell, go to the description, click the link, Revolution Radio Live on Facebook, smash that like button over there. If you don't have a Facebook, or you can follow us on Twitter at Rev Radio Live. All of the information will be in the description. And until then, let's go ahead and take a look at Evan Neal. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and let's go and discuss Evan Neal, offensive tackle from the University of Alabama. So first thing that you're going to notice right away is just how sh how massive he is. Six foot seven, three hundred and fifty pounds. I've even seen as much as three hundred and sixty pounds. So obviously you're looking at a very, very massive man here that we're talking about uh, with Evan Neal, which is honestly not a surprise from guys that you've seen come out of Alabama as well. Just a little bit of uh, information about Evan Neal. He did play left guard in 2019 as a true freshman, which we all know if you were able to play as a freshman for Nick Saban, something is up. And it's in a good way because if you're able to play as a true freshman uh, for Nick Saban, you have to be damn good. And then obviously in 2020, after the departure of Jedrick Wills, Evan Neal went over to the right tackle position. And then after the 2020 season, he took over for Alex Leatherwood at left tackle in 2021. So that's something you're going to take, you can notice right away is just his versatility that he has experience at almost everywhere on the field uh, in terms of the offensive line. So that's something that you can like, or you can maybe give yourself cause to pause just on the fact that maybe he hasn't got enough experience yet. Uh, and, you know, just in terms of just overall in the positions, but you like the versatility there. He was the seventh ranked recruit in 2019 as a five star. He was the number one overall uh, recruit in his position. Uh, he was a team captain in 2021 and he was also an All American. So that shows the kind of teammate that he is if he was voted as a permanent captain in 2021. So, over the, here's something great that you want to hear if you're a team that's possibly looking into drafting Evan Neal. Uh, he's only allowed two sacks over 1,073 snaps in the, in the two years that he's played tackle. And so that is pretty incredible to see. And that's a similar stat that we heard about Jedrick Wills doing at his time at Alabama. So obviously that shows that he's able to protect the quarterback at all costs. And that is something, again, especially in today's NFL, if you're going to play left tackle, which is so vitally important, you need to know you have that trust in your left tackle. And obviously with Evan Neal at Alabama, you do just get that. Another fun fact, too, is that he was also a 2019 freshman All-American first team. So, again, that just shows how dominant he was right away for Nick Saban at Alabama. And those are just some quick facts, tips, and interesting quirks about Evan Neal. Now let's go ahead and let's get into some of the strengths and weaknesses. All right, let's go ahead and get to some of the pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses of Evan Neal here. So obviously one thing that we talked about uh, before was his size. We talked and there's obviously pros and cons to being that big. Pros are obviously, it's hard to get around him. He's able to take up a lot of space. And you also typically become very strong. And that is something that you will notice with him. He is very powerful. He has strong, heavy hands. He's hard to get around. He does use great leverage, which is something as an offensive lineman, when you're that big, becomes an advantage for you. When it comes to some of the cons of being that size, 
Obviously, conditioning has something to do with that. You question just how conditioned, just how in shape is he going to be. Again, if you play for Nick Saban, you have to be able to be able to learn how to play the game of football very well, and you also have to be well conditioned. Some of the weaknesses, too, that I noticed with Evan Neal, and you're going to notice this, I'll make sure to put in a couple clips of this, is being able to... He's late identifying stunts. You'll notice a lot of times that there will be some certain stunts that will go around uh, to his side. And it just, he's late identifying them. And that's something that you're going to have to pick up on. And there's been a couple times where that has led to pressures. So that's something that really needs to be addressed. Also, you'll notice that he tends at times to stand up in his stance, which will also help. That will help you lose your balance. That will help you lose some of the strength that you have in your lower body. Because at that point you lose all of the power in your knees with the bend. And so all that does is now that gives the ability for that defensive lineman to blow you back. And also you'll tend to notice that he tends to bend his waist a little bit downwards. And you're asking yourself well, what would that mean? So typically as an offensive lineman you want to have nice bend at your knees. You want to be able to thrust your hips you want to be able to snap those hips and be able to make hard impact and if you bend down well then that becomes easy to put your head down and now that defensive lineman can go right past you no problem and that's something that at times you will notice and that's something that is definitely going to need to be addressed but obviously there an offensive line coach in the nfl will definitely be able to help out with that all right, getting into an NFL comparison, for me, what I saw out of this, at first, when you think of just the size that he is, you think Mekhi Becton, but I didn't really see Mekhi Becton at all. What I saw was Orlando Brown. Now, Orlando Brown was a guy who was drafted a day, he was a day two guy, probably should have been a day one guy, and they both have similar strengths and weaknesses, and I just... It looked just like how Orlando Brown would play, and that's kind of what the vibe that I got out of him. So there is my NFL pro comp for Evan Neal and some of the strengths and weaknesses. Now let's go ahead and get into the film. All right, so here's the first play I want to show you. So he's right here uh, in the middle of your screen, and there's something about this play that I like. So we talked about, okay, so right there, so obviously you can see how he's kind of getting pushed back a little bit. But one thing that you notice still has bend, still has bend in the knees. And what that does for you is that gives you that base to where, and if you keep that inside foot up, you keep that inside leg up and you have bend at the hips and bend at the knees, that gives you the ability to keep your leg strength and to not get necessarily blown back here and again we're going to watch this so watch this one more time so yep he's he's going in his in a stance now notice how that back leg drops that right there and then you notice that right there the moment he the moment he drops that leg back here boom now he's starting to get driven back but the moment he gets that left foot he gets that right foot out that right leg out has bend at the hips bend at the knees that's when he's able to stabilize his position and he's able to stay foot all right so this next play that i want to show you here so he's right here kind of bottom of your screen middle of the screen right here and I just kind of want to watch you. So right here, you start off his goal. He has a one-on-one -on -one with his outside outside tackle here. And his goal is to just basically make push this guy out of here so he, we could create this hole right here. Now, if you'll notice, now one thing too, and obviously this is part of him bent, or grabbing him, but he l allows himself to bend down and what that does is obviously now he this number seven guy he would be able to swim over now your head becomes coming down and now that becomes easy to blow past you okay so here's a play that i want to show you now this becomes an interesting stunt here that they like to run so georgia what they've done here is they move 
who I, I think that's number 95. They push him inside here, and then you get this guy that comes inside. Now you'll get this defensive tackle here. He's going to loop all the way around to this outside. And I want you to watch how late here. Here's Evan Neal right here. Just watch how late he takes to identify this. Now watch. Now he's already... It, that was pretty late in terms of being able to identify that stunt. And again, I know this is a very interesting stunt that you see. You don't see this every day. But again, this is the NFL. You're going to have to be able to learn to identify these stunts just a little bit quicker. And I think with film study, with being, with being able to t get taught in the NFL, I think this is something that will be able to get cleaned up here. Just one more time. One more time here. Again, boom, pretty late reaction, but it was okay because of the fact that he was that Bryce Young was able to roll out in the pocket and he was able to get the first down. All right, so this next play here that I'm going to show you is so right here, bottom of your screen. Uh, this is this is a positive here that I want to show you. We talked about having heavy hands and having powerful hands. Well, watch him on this backdrop. Boom. Just watch how he's able. He plays with good leverage once again. He's able to use those heavy hands and he's able to blow Pat or he's able to blow this guy up. Boom. Now he's able. Now what that does as well is it gives you a little bit more time. It's going to take him a little bit more time to recover to gain that space back. And we all know in the NFL, especially when you're protecting, that half a second or even quarter of a second can mean that much more. So again, and that's just beautiful protection there. Again, he's able to drop back. Boom! Use those heavy hands, and now that's a completion, or I meant to, it was actually an incompletion, but that was a complete, a complete block on him. You like that again, and boom! All right, so here's a play against Ole Miss here. So right here, bottom of your screen, and I got just watch this play real quick and tell me what you notice. All right, so right away he kind of get he gets bullied here, and why is that? So the reason being, so right here. So right here, you, you, you do have the bend at the hips, but it, it, he allows himself to be a little too high. And what that does, and obviously the moment you get a little too high like that, now, watch this, boom. The moment he gets high, now this guy's just able to throw him away. And obviously the run was to the opposite side, but you notice that, boom, he's just able to throw him like that. It's something that you're going to have to work on a little bit, but it's all right. All right, so this next play here that I want to show you was not necessarily something that we discussed or talked about, but obviously I'm going to give you a little bit of education here. So watch this play right here, bottom of your screen, or top of your screen, right here, middle of your screen. Okay, boom. Now, why was number seven able to get him like that? Why was number seven able to do that? So one thing that you're taught is obviously you're supposed to shuffle the feet with a little bit of uh, length in between. Reason being is because that gives you your base and it doesn't allow you for to keep that inside foot. It keeps that uh, that inside foot up, and that's a it gives you the ability to keep your legs. Uh, All right, so this play that I'm going to show you right here, a middle of your screen, I want you to watch. Why was – just watch the results here of this play. Okay. Boom. Number seven was able to make a spin off of that. Now, the, why was that? Why was that? All right. So I want you to note – watch his feet here. Okay. So right here, the reason of why that happened, right in here, he starts to cross his feet. And obviously, that is a day one thing that you're taught. That's an absolute no-no. Reason being is because when you start to cross your feet, you don't have a straight base. And you, and obviously, as offensive lineman, if you can have yourself a nice solid base, your inside foot up, your inside leg up, knees bent to the hips, or knees bent, and you have your hips bent, what that does is it gives you a firm base to say, hey, I am not moving anywhere unless I unless you are moving with me. But what he does here, he crosses the feet, and now that does is you lose that base. You lose that balance that you have, and now what he's able to do, now he's able to use the spin move, and now you're lost in the wind. So again, that's something that, this is not something that we discussed, but this was just something in this film study that I noticed, and we'll have to take a look at that later on down the line. All right, so this play here that I want to show you, so it's going to be kind of tough. I'll have a circle here on the screen for you of where he's at. 
But when we talk about being a mauler and being a brawler in the run game here, this is what we're talking about. Boom, just being able he went just being able to man up, win at the line of scrimmage, and just be able to drive your man back. That is three plus yards that he was able to drive his man back. And obviously you need to be a mauler and a brawler in today's NFL, and you love to see that. A guy that's physical, boom. He's able to just drive his man. And it boom. And he just drives the feet, and now that's just textbook. We're going to watch it from this angle right here. Boom. He's just able to drive, and he mauls, mauls people. And that right there, if you're an offensive lineman fan, you love to see a guy that's able to just maul and brawl you like that. All right, so this play that I'm going to show you right here, this is just something that I absolutely love. For an offensive lineman of his size, just watch the ability to stay in front of his man. So, okay, boom. All right, now he's now watch him. Now watch the ability. He uses the hands, uses the feet. Now he's able to just stick with this man, no problem. You love that, and again, Obviously, if you're a quarterback, if you're an offensive lineman, you could only hold on to a guy for so long. And obviously, here Bryce Young's not able to find anyone, and he has to move around in the pocket. That's going to happen at times, but Bryce Young is ridiculous here. But again, just just being able to stick in front of your man, that is textbook. Being able to shuffle the feet, he has good base, no shuffling of the feet, and that is absolutely textbook. Now, you would have loved to maybe, but yet again, actually here, I like the ability right here not to get the temptation to hold here because this is definitely a situation where you might want to grab a hold of him and that could possibly cost you here on third and goal. So that was actually smart of him to not get the holding call here, but obviously Bryce Young being able to do what he does. All right, so this is the final play that I'm going to show you here. So again, right here, middle of your screen, this is what I love. As an offensive lineman fan, boom, okay. So you see right here automatically this defensive end, he's trying to use what we like to, uh, he likes to use guard leverage. He's going to try to beat you half man, but instead it's Evan Neal, obviously maybe a little bit of a hold here, but obviously a little bit of holding doesn't hurt, but again, it doesn't matter because he's just able to say, nope, you're coming with me and I'm just going to bully you and you're not going to hit my quarterback. Nope. Now, boom. Oh my God, the physicality on that is ridiculous. Again, we're going to watch it from this angle again. So he's going to try to use his right here. He was going to try to hit something inside, but instead he wasn't able to. And now, boom, now we're just going to throw you like a little child. Well, there you have it. There is my draft profile of Evan Neal, offensive tackle from Alabama. Again, he is someone that is possibly being looked at as the number one overall pick and especially the number one at his position. And you can see why. He was definitely a mauler and a brawler. And we could go on for hours and hours and hours just looking at film on some of the, a lot of the goods and some of the bads. But obviously, we, are, we do have a limited amount of time. But... Again, if you like these kind of videos, smash the like button, hit the red subscribe button, drop a comment, turn on the notification bell, go to the description, click the link, Revolution Radio Live on Facebook, smash that like button over there. And if you don't have a Facebook, well, you can follow us on Twitter at Rev Radio Live. All of our information is down in the description. And until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe, everyone. Peace out.